I invite you to join me in prayer or to reflect upon your own tradition. Lord, the moment of graduation is here, and we ask you to share this day with us. Thankful for the opportunities that have made this day and ceremony a reality, for the splendid minds and abilities of these graduating students, for the enthusiasm and dedication of the faculty, for the assistance and concern of the staff, we give you thanks. For the families and loved ones who have sacrificed and supported them during this demanding year, we give you thanks. We pray that what has been absorbed in this year of education and reflection may assist these leaders to maintain the flexibility and creativity which their future positions of leadership will demand. Be present with our graduates and their families, we pray, as they prepare to move throughout the world in roles of ever-increasing increasing responsibilities. So for this, we ask your blessings on this happy occasion. In your most holy presence, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We would like to thank the Pennsylvania Army National Guard, elements of the 1st of the 108th Field Artillery, for participating in our ceremony today and honoring our guest speaker with a 19-gun salute. The United States Army War College Student Awards Program recognizes outstanding student research, writing, and speaking on issues of importance to national security. The awards presented today are sponsored by the U.S. Army War College, by the Army War College Foundation, and by external organizations that encourage excellence in military scholarship. The Chief Executive Officer of the Army War College Foundation, Colonel Retired Ruth B. Collins, the Dean, Dr. Richard Lackument, the Provost, Dr. Lance Petros, the 50th Commandant of the U.S. Army War College, Major General William Rapp, and the Vice Chief of Staff of the U.S. Army, General Daniel B. Allen, will present the Student Research and Writing Awards. Please hold your applause until all awards have been presented. Third place in the 2017 Secretary of Defense National Security Essay Competition goes to Colonel Paul W. Turnbull, writing mentor, Dr. David Lai. First place in the 2017 Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff National Defense and Military Strategy Essay Competition for his 5,000-word strategy research paper goes to Lieutenant Colonel Benjamin R. Ogden, Project Advisor, Dr. Stephen Garris. The following students are being honored with the Commandant's Award for Distinction in Research. Lieutenant Colonel Charles B. Kane, Project Advisor, Dr. David Lai. Colonel Mark M. Hamilton, Project Advisor, Dr. C. Anthony Pfaff. Colonel Mark B. Shirky, Project Advisor, Dr. Glenn K. Cunningham. Lieutenant Colonel Patrick J. Sullivan, Project Advisor, Dr. Andrew A. Hill. Dr. James T. Treharn, Project Advisor, Dr. Don M. Snyder. The following student is being honored with the Foreign Area Officer Association Research Award. Colonel Stephanie R. Ahern, Project Advisor, Colonel Douglas W. Winton. The following student is being honored with the Excellence in Logistics Research Award and the Lieutenant General Retired Eugene J. D'Ambrosio Logistics Writing Award, Mr. Joseph A. Brooks, Project Advisor, Colonel Douglas G. Dowds. The following students are being honored with the Army War College Foundation Award for Outstanding Strategy Research Paper. Colonel Michael J. Birmingham, Project Advisor, Dr. Christopher J. Bolin. Ms. Wendy Marshall, Project Advisor, Dr. Paul C. Jessel. Mr. Patrick B. Quinn, Project Advisor, Dr. Paul C. Jessel. Lieutenant Colonel Mark R. Reed, Project Advisor, Colonel Stephen K. Van Riper. 
The following student is being honored with the Army War College Foundation Daniel M. Lewin Cyber Terrorism Technology Writing Award. Lieutenant Colonel Kenneth J. Bistner, Mentor Professor Douglas C. Lovelace. The following student is being honored with the Army War College Foundation Colonel Don and Mrs. Ann Bussey Military Intelligence Writing Award. Lieutenant Colonel Andrew W. Jones, Project Advisor, Professor Vanya Eftimova Bellinger. The following student is being honored with the Colonel and Mrs. T. Bristol Military History Writing Award, Colonel Patrick E. Proctor, Project Advisor, Dr. Antulio J. Echeverria II. The following student is being honored with the Army War College Foundation Colonel Jerry D. Cashin Memorial Writing Award. Colonel Scott W. Mueller, Project Advisor, Dr. Antulio J. Echeverria II. The following student is being honored with the Association of the United States Army Writing Award, Lieutenant Colonel Richard R. Balestri, Mentor Pro Professor Brett D. Weigel. The following student is being honored with the Marine Corps Association and Foundation General Thomas Holcomb Writing Award. Lieutenant Colonel Neil J. Owens, Project Advisor, Colonel David W. Detata. The following students are being honored with the Military Officers Association of America Writing Award. Colonel Eric L. Christensen, Project Advisor, Dr. Mary Beth Ulrich. Lieutenant Colonel Scott A. Myers, Project Advisor, Dr. Mary Beth Ulrich. The following student is being honored with the Military Order of the World Wars Writing Award, Colonel William D. Voorhees, Project Advisor, Colonel Stephen K. Van Riper. The following student is being honored with the Red River Valley Fighter Pilots Association Writing Award. Lieutenant Colonel Mark C. Dimitrishin, Project Advisor, Colonel Edward A. Kaplan. The following student is being honored with the United States Military Academy's Simon Center for the Professional Military Ethic Writing Award. Colonel Derek K. Thompson, Project Advisor, Dr. Don M. Snyder. The following student is being honored with the Reserve Officers Association Lieutenant General Thomas J. Plews Writing Award. Chaplain Colonel James L. Bagus, Project Advisor, Dr. C. Anthony Pfaff. The following student is being honored with the Carlisle Barracks and Cumberland Valley Chapter of the Association of the United States Army Award for Excellence in Public Speaking. Mr. Jesse D. Munoz. To honor his leadership, the Army War College Foundation will present a lifetime alumni membership to the class president, Colonel Arvesta P. Roberson II. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for our award winners. Ladies and gentlemen, the 50th Commandant of the United States Army War College, Major General William E. Rapp. Hey, good morning, uh, class of 2017. A hearty Carlisle welcome to the families and friends of these graduates as well as to our distinguished visitors. Thank you for being here today. And what a superb day. This is when 61 degrees is absolutely perfect. But this day is superb for much more than just the weather. It's because of the significance of the achievements of these students who've excelled in a tough but vitally important and relevant program of study and reflection here at Carlisle Barracks. This class 
my last resident class at the U.S. Army War College, will always hold a special place in my heart. My thanks go to you all for your great effort and attitude. My thanks go as well to the faculty and staff of the U.S. Army War College for their professionalism and skills as teachers and mentors. Being the gold standard for strategic leader education and idea development comes from having a world-class faculty. These are our credentials. Thank you for all of your efforts. William Tecumseh Sherman once said that it is enough for the world to know that I am a soldier. In a world of ever increasing complexity and velocity of change, it will be soldiers like General Dan Allen who will rise to the occasion and bring stability into this sea of chaos. A graduate from the United States Military Academy in 1981, General Allen has served in a variety of infantry and ranger units leading combat formations from platoon to corps. He led 3rd Brigade Combat Team, 3rd Infantry Division, into Karbala and into Baghdad in the initial invasion of Iraq in the spring of 2003. He led 1st Cav Division in Regional Command East in Afghanistan. And he led U.S. Forces Command before becoming our Vice Chief of Staff. He has fought through adversity, such as having to overcome the challenge of doing a senior service college at the Navy's second tier institution in Newport, Rhode Island. <laughs> However, since becoming vice in August 2014, General Allen has fought tirelessly to maintain the capability and capacity of all three Army components that are needed to defend America, to preserve the national freedom of action, and to provide strategic options for the President worldwide. His steady leadership of soldiers at all level has been remarkable in these turbulent times. He is that soldier that does justice to Sherman's words of so many years ago. He is truly Army strong, and it's my great honor to introduce to you our 35th Vice Chief of the United States Army, General Dan Allen. Yeah, not only did I graduate from a second tier uh, institution, but I'm much shorter uh, than uh, General Rapp. So hang in there. I'm going to level your uh, eyesight just a little bit. But uh, good morning and welcome, distinguished guests, community leaders, faculty, and staff to, the, to today's ceremony. And yes, what a beautiful day here in Carlisle. But of course, every day that I get to come to Carlisle is beautiful, regardless of the weather, because it means I'm not back there uh, where I came from. But I am truly honored and humbled to join you here today. Most importantly, welcome and congratulations to the class of 2017. You made it. You made it. Now, I have heard that you spent more hours studying than most other classes, and I commend you for your commitment. Though speaking from my own War College experience, prior year competition may not have been such a high bar to clear. I'm just saying. Congratulations, all of you, on your efforts and all your accomplishments. And also a special thank you to your families for their patience and their support through this rigorous curriculum. I want to recognize our international fellows, a very prestigious group that will go forward in the days, weeks, and years to come to lead their nation's armies. This large class, 74 fellows representing 70 nations, reinforces our mutual commitment and future teamwork with one another. And yes, it starts here. By exchanging ideas, hearing different perspectives, and forming bonds that will last long past the time invested here at the Army War College. Relationships endure and create amazing opportunities for trust and interdependence.
Congratulations all, and thank you for your rich contributions. Let's give a round of applause to all our international fellows. <laughs> Major General Rapp, I thank you for your exemplary leadership and for shaping this outstanding academic institution for the demands of future conflict. You can be justifiably proud of your enduring impact on Carlisle's contributions to our Army, the Joint Force, and the multinational force you have helped to shape. Your vision and passion for the War College's mission is inspiring, and your commitment to serve as a leader of character is unyielding. I would ask all of us to recognize General Rapp as he culminates his career of service to the nation in uniform. Now, the 39th Chief of Staff of the Army, General Milley, though he couldn't be here with us today, asked me to do three things with my remarks. Be engaging, be inspiring, and be brief. I'm not sure whether I can deliver on the first two, but I'll do my damnedest to meet the third. And I know that's the one you care about. Preparing for today caused me to reflect on my own War College experience. And yes, it was at a second tier uh, institution. Truth in lending, I didn't spend time here at Carlisle other than Jim Thorpe week. You see, in order for the Navy to field teams for that competitive endeavor, they had to use all the Army guys to flesh out those teams. True story, true story. I attended War College at Newport, but it was a solid education nonetheless. I took away many lessons from that fruitful year. Not all, surprise, surprise, reserved to the academic uh, experience. And I thought I'd share a few with you today for your own reflection and consideration as you step forward from here. The first point of emphasis is that as strategic leaders, you will help our profession manage difficult transformations. But we as a joint interagency and multinational team have been immersed in an environment of perpetual change for nearly two decades. And like the great leaders before you, this group of professionals is prepared to sustain the momentum as our change agents for the future. Yes, the world was a different place during my War College experience in 2000 to 2001. For example, back then, the fear of mad cow disease spread alarm across Europe. The US handed control of the Panama Canal back to Panama after 75 years. Lone Star, Destiny's Child, and Shaggy topped the music charts. Ray Lewis was the Super Bowl MVP, Shaquille O'Neal, the NBA championship MVP, and Tiger Woods, the winner of his second Masters. The Aflac Duck made his television debut, and the first season of the TV show Survivor was on the air. Some things are greater than others, obviously. George W. Bush, after a prolonged legal battle, won the presidential election. And on October 12th, of 2000, Al-Qaeda attacked the USS Cole in Yemen, killing 17 American sailors and wounding 39 more. And yes, less than a year later, Al-Qaeda launched the 9-11 attacks, forever changing life as we know it on this planet. That wasn't so long ago, but my, how things have changed. Since then, we've been constantly invested in two wars, transformed our army into a modular, more lethal and deployable force, 
routinely integrated joint interagency multinational and spe special operations forces, developed mastery and dependence upon unmanned systems, and postured and structured our Army to execute everything from peacekeeping and security force assistance to counterterrorism and major combat operations often in the same operating space. Today, our Army is globally responsive and engaged with nearly 184,000 soldiers supporting combatant commanders in over 140, 140 worldwide locations. We continue to develop our future force. Our Army's efforts to ensure our future force can win in this complex world leveraging the full capability and capacity of our joint force across multiple domains. Future forces must be flexible and adaptable for training and advisory missions, absolutely lethal when necessary, and robust enough to fight a major ground war against a peer adversary, or as our personal preference, sufficiently strong and strategically postured to deter one from ever occurring. We are operationalizing attributes of the force of the future in real time. The 3rd Armor Brigade Combat Team of the 4th Infantry Division and the 2nd Cavalry Regiment's ongoing efforts in Poland and the Baltics, along with conventional and special operations forces ongoing missions across Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria demonstrate through their range of missions and integration of multi-domain capabilities the adaptability of our joint force. The creation of our first Security Force Assistance Brigade later this year will introduce even more capacity and capability and provide combatant commanders, commanders precisely targeted options to meet their needs today and well into the foreseeable future. Looking ahead, we will sustain our commitment to adapt and innovate, integrating emerging capabilities and concepts to enhance the lethality of our formations and validate sound operational approaches to ensure we are postured and ready to win in future conflicts. While it may seem like a long time ago, I'm reminded that my time in Newport, when Shaggy was topping the charts, is further behind us today than the year 2025 is to our future. And while my War College class fulfilled our role as military leaders, learning to be comfortable in uncertainty and changing environments during an extraordinarily challenging period in our nation's history, we today transition leadership for our future responsibilities to your capable hands. The leaders seated amongst us this morning will soon be responsible for leading change with an uncertain mix of forces, an even more uncertain budget, and in an arguably more dangerous and more complex world than the one we faced at the turn of the millennium. But I sleep well because the leaders we are blessed with in our joint force, molded by 15 plus years in the crucible of combat, and now broadened with a strategic education, remain our asymmetric advantage. Your careers have prepared you for the challenges in front of you, and we know, as you know, that you are ready. My second point of emphasis is that your War College classmates, much like those from other professional military education experiences, are a ready source of strength, an enduring ace card in your deck. Keep in touch with them and consistently reach out for advice and collaboration. Leverage your expanded network every day. The relationships we forge in this great profession of ours pay dividends, often in the most arduous of circumstances. This is especially true as senior leaders in our military. I certainly have benefited from the connections I made at the War College. 
With roughly 150 international and joint students, our Naval War College class included names, among others, like Mobile Holmes, Cyrus Vance, Cindy Jeb, John Wharton, and Maura Connolly. The first four went off to become flag officers, and the last, the U.S. Ambassador to Lebanon. One of our international students, Admiral Vidal Soberon, is currently serving as the Secretary of the Navy for Mexico. I've interacted with and called for help from many of my peers over the past 16 years, often in moments of great impact. Whether fighting together in Iraq or Afghanistan, seeking counsel as we serve together on the Joint or Army staff, on good days and bad, I was able to better fulfill many missions to the relationships I built with the Joint Interagency and multinational partners in this environment. This culture of relationship building influenced my approach for the rest of my military career exemplify this commitment, and those around you will follow your lead. Finally, it's important to remember that while joint duty at a combatant command or service as a division chief within the confines of the Pentagon may not be glamorous, what you do as strategic leaders determines where soldiers fight, how they fight, and with what equipment they fight. So I ask you today to personalize your commitment and passion to serve our service members and our joint force. Put a face on the why we serve. It will gird you for the unyielding bureaucracy that arises routinely to stymie strategic level change. It will cement your focus as leaders to be relentless in pursuit of improved lethality, mobility, and protection of our troops on the ground, in the air, and on the sea. The war fighters around the globe today are why we exist. We will continue to ask them to perform dangerous but necessary tasks just as they have these last 15 plus years. And they will continue to amaze us with their unyielding commitment and courage. In our profession, we spell trust in all caps. It is foundational to what we do and unconditional. And as strategic leaders, we maintain trust with the all-volunteer force by doing everything we can every day to fight for their best interests. So three lessons from my War College experience that I ask you to think about and consider application in your own future. You have many difficult tasks ahead of you, but we know this terrain, and you and your teammates are more than ready. Network daily, and remember to stay connected to your War College teammates. Leverage this elite team to achieve exponential results, no matter where you find yourself in need or in a position to help others. Finally, strategic leadership matters. It determines whether our joint force wins or loses. Personalize your commitment. Be a passionate advocate. And maintain the trust of those we lead by doing all you can to fight for them every day. Before I go, I want to leave you with one final thought. Your graduation today marks your transition from tactical to operational and strategic leaders. Going forward, stay laser focused on the development and mentorship of our next generation of decisive leaders. Your measure of success will be the men and women who, 10 years and more after you serve with them, continue to serve in our great profession. You have an opportunity to impact tens of thousands of leaders for decades to come. Seize every opportunity to extend our legacy of leadership excellence. I congratulate you all for your dedicated service to country 
and your willingness to take on higher levels of responsibility. I thank the incredible staff and faculty at the Army War College for your commitment to rigorous learning and to the profession of arms. And most importantly, I thank each of the family members who stand alongside their graduate today. You are the reason we remain the greatest land power in the world. I wish you all great success in your future endeavors, and I thank you for allowing me to be part of your celebration. God bless you all, Army Strong. Major General Rapp and the United States Army War College are pleased to confer upon General Daniel B. Allen the honorary degree of Master of Letters, Strategic Studies, together with all honors, rights, and privileges pertaining thereto, given at Carlisle, Pennsylvania, this 9th day of June, 2017. I had to rectify a 15-year wrong. <laughs> I had to have a legitimate uh, entry on my resume. So said General Rapp. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, class of 2017 diplomas are conferred under the authority of the United States Congress. In recognition of their accomplishments, the graduates will receive the diploma of the United States Army War College and, if earned, the degree of Master of Strate Strategic Studies. Graduates will be presented diplomas by Dr. Lacument, Dr. Betros, Major General Rapp, and General Allen. Please hold your applause until all degrees and diplomas have been presented. Seminar 1, Lieutenant Colonel Brian James Shivers. Colonel Saeed Asharani, Saudi Arabia. Colonel Bilbil Bitri, Albania. Colonel Kurt Robert Boston. Colonel Joel Mark Buenaflor, Mr. Kevin M. Zarkowski, Colonel Stephen Frederick Elder, Lieutenant Colonel Stephen D. Hayden, Colonel Ronnie Anthony Johnson, Colonel Robert Insko Kenny. Colonel Andrew James Maskell, United Kingdom. Colonel Robert Simon Matthews, Jr. Colonel Fidel Vargas Ruiz. Colonel Aaron Sander. Lieutenant Colonel Ronald D. Storer. From Seminar 2, Lieutenant Colonel Rodney Maurice Gibson. Sorry. Lieutenant Colonel Esther Joan Cruz Agigi. Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Edwin Baker. Colonel Romeo S. Bronner, Jr., Philippines. Lieutenant Colonel Charles B. Kane. Brigadier General Motaz Makram El Gabri, Egypt. Colonel Timothy Richard Fuller. Colonel William G. Jacobs. Mr. Brian A. Jost. Colonel J. S. Liddick, Jr. 
Colonel Neil I. Nelson. Lieutenant Colonel Neil J. Owens. Lieutenant Colonel Alfonso Pardo, Spain. Lieutenant Colonel Philip A. Taylor. Lieutenant Colonel Jeremy Scott Wilson. Seminar three, Colonel Colin Trent Hutton. Brigadier Azar Abbasi, Pakistan. Lieutenant Colonel Clifton Leon Barger, Jr. Lieutenant Colonel Troy Michael Denemy. Mr. Mark Edward Haythorne. Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Thomas Kuhn. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph John Melizia, Jr. Colonel Joseph G. Matthews. Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Edward McCormick. Lieutenant Colonel Jeremy T. McGarry. Colonel William Jason McKnight. Lieutenant Colonel David B. Moore. Colonel Anicio Negrao, Brazil. Colonel Luigi Postiglioni, Italy. Colonel Michael Patrick Sullivan. Lieutenant Colonel Rashawn J. Tate. Seminar four, Colonel Don Alex King. Colonel Ramos Hadrian Bondor, Romania. Colonel Ralph E. Bordner III. Lieutenant Colonel Barry Robert Carlson, Jr. Colonel Seokju Choi, Korea. Colonel James A. Diamond. Lieutenant Colonel Daniel J. Grissetti. Ms. Sigrid J. Harris Wright. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Jacob Kimball. Lieutenant Colonel Michael C. Klein. Lieutenant Colonel Scott Andrew Myers. Colonel Darcy Leanne Overby. Colonel Christopher R. Reed. Mr. Scott S. Romero. Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Sasa, Democratic Republic of Congo. Lieutenant Colonel Stanley Y. Sayo. Seminar five, Colonel Stephen Mark Pierce. Lu Lieutenant Colonel Brandon C. Anderson. Lieutenant Colonel Michael F. Arnone. Colonel Mark James Berglund. Colonel Brian E. Fowler. Colonel Kenneth Lozano. 
Mr. Darrell D. McCarthy. Lieutenant Colonel Brian C. Mellon. Colonel Bosbelli A. Racinos Magana, El Salvador. Mr. Keith E. Ryan. Colonel Yakubo Sanogo, Mali. Lieutenant Colonel Andrew O. Saslav. Colonel Renee L. Tempko. Lieutenant Colonel George H. Walter. Colonel Adam Z. Walton. Lieutenant Colonel Martin Wernicke, Germany. Seminar 6, Colonel James Boone Bartholomews III. Colonel Leslie D. Begley. Lieutenant Colonel Mark E. Bellscamper. Colonel James C. Bliss, New Zealand. Colonel Jonathan B. Butler. Colonel Patrick J. Egan. Colonel Joel Matthew Greer. Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Charles Hellerstedt. Colonel Roman Yochadze, Georgia. Colonel Brian Allen Kastning. Miss Sandra K. Minkle. Lieutenant Colonel Benjamin Ray Ogden. Lieutenant Colonel Robert L. Perryman, Jr. Captain Daniel A. Schultz, in absentia. Lieutenant Colonel Kelsey Aaron Smith. Lieutenant Colonel Mamadou Abdule Sila, Senegal. Seminar 7, Colonel Stephanie A. Kortnick. Brigadier General Ahmed Nasir, Malaysia. Colonel Kape Kabaju Alwali Kazir, Nigeria. Lieutenant Colonel Mac W. Curry II. Lieutenant Colonel Luis G. Fuchu. Colonel Robert Douglas Halverson. Colonel Mark C. Johnson, graduating in absentia. Colonel Nicholas A. Kristoff. Uh. Excuse me, that was Commander Nicholas A. Kristoff. Mr. Ryan P. Landrum. Colonel Paul Payton, Canada. Colonel Richard A. Raby. Lieutenant Colonel Brendan Colin Raymond. Colonel Eric Michael Schwartz. Colonel Shane Michael Sullivan. Lieutenant Colonel William B. Vaughn. Colonel Eric W. Young. 
Seminar 8, Colonel Ralph A. Lounsbro. Colonel John P. Castillo. Colonel Jerry E. Chandler, Jr. Lieutenant Colonel Mark A. Cloutier. Brigadier Susan M. Coyle, Australia. Lieutenant Colonel Lulacha Ramadani Hayashi, Tanzania. Colonel Jason R. Kalinoff. Commander Joel D. McMillan. Colonel Frederick J. Mosley. Lieutenant Colonel Mert Plach, Estonia. Colonel Joseph Ward Roberts. Colonel Mark B. Shirky. Colonel Michael Scott Underwood. Lieutenant Colonel G. Byron Williams II. Lieutenant Colonel John Mark Wilson. Mr. Jeffrey M. Zeiser. Seminar 9, Colonel Teo Christian Moore. Colonel John Christian Becking. Colonel Eric L. Christensen. Lieutenant Colonel Sammy El Hassania, Lebanon. Did I skip? Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Michael Finn. So the name that was skipped is Lieutenant Colonel Sky D. Duncan. <laughs> now Captain Richard S. Gist. <laughs> Colonel Bernard John Harrington. Colonel Petri Kanyanma, Finland. Colonel Ernest Kisbedo, Burkina Faso. Colonel Francisco Javier Lozano. Lieutenant Colonel Peggy R. McManus. Lieutenant Colonel Brandon Gregorio Mino. Mr. Patrick B. Quinn. Lieutenant Colonel Guy T. Spencer. Lieutenant Colonel Barry K. Vincent. Seminar 10, Colonel Matthew Donald Rauscher. Colonel Nawaf Aljateli, Kuwait. Colonel Richard David Conkle. Colonel James Lee Connor. Lieutenant Colonel Mark C. Dimitrishin. Colonel Jeffrey M. Ferris. Colonel Langdon John Lucas. Colonel Mamadou Adam Mohammed, Chad. 
Colonel Stephen Clifford Moore. Lieutenant Colonel Elizabeth A. Perrazzo. Colonel Scott H. Sinkular. Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Stapleton. Colonel Richard Joseph Surowick. Colonel Nestoros Vargramezis, Greece. Mr. Derek K. Wong. Seminar 11, Colonel David E. Shank. Colonel Ali Almari Qatar. Lieutenant Colonel Francois Xavier Elias France. Colonel Angela Lee Funaro. Lieutenant Colonel John F. Hall. Mr. Michael R. Hanrahan. Colonel Darren K. Jennings. Colonel Derek P. Jones. Colonel John T. Litz. Lieutenant Colonel Michael P. Marciniak. Lieutenant Colonel Vladimir Minarik, Slovak Republic. Colonel Alan J. Quatrin. Lieutenant Colonel Mark F. Schoenfeld. Lieutenant Colonel Thomas E. Seagars, Jr. Commander David Jeffrey Smith. Seminar 12, Lieutenant Colonel Christopher G. Hosfeld. Brigadier General Bassam A. Al Alawin, Jordan. Lieutenant Colonel John R. Burer. Colonel Ralph T. Borja. Colonel Adam James Boyd. Lieutenant Colonel Chad Bridges. Lieutenant Colonel Tedros Howard Charles. Colonel Yetan Dreshai, Kosovo. Colonel Brian Ray Formi Duval. Miss Deborah A. McLemore Baugh. Lieutenant Colonel Robert D. Mons. Colonel Luis Alfredo Ortiz. Lieutenant Colonel Monica M. Radke. Lieutenant Colonel Christopher D. Robertson. Colonel Gary A. Walinda. Mr. Xu Wei Yang, Taiwan. Seminar 13, Colonel Christopher N. Reichardt. Lieutenant Colonel Tony K. Aseavu, Papua New Guinea. Commander Todd D. Carroll. Lieutenant Colonel John C. Dobbin. Colonel Anthony Donald Fournier. 
Lieutenant Colonel Eric M. Johnson. Colonel Shai Clapper Israel. Ms. Wendy Sue Marshall. Lieutenant Colonel Brian J. Marzen. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Navas III. Colonel Matthew P. Novak. Colonel Esley Terrell Pitts. Colonel Patricia K. Sales. Colonel Derek K. Thompson. Colonel Lieutenant Colonel Pridrag Viskovic, Bosnia Herzegovina. Colonel Herbert Ray Willingham. Seminar 14, Colonel William David Voorhees. Colonel Stephanie R. Ahern. Colonel Robert Raymond Arnold, Jr. Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel David A. Bolas. Lieutenant Colonel Scott A. Garris. Lieutenant Colonel Shifra B. Gameda, Ethiopia. Colonel Hilman Hadi, Indonesia. Mr. Mark M. Hamilton. Colonel Sloan L. Hollis. Lieutenant Colonel Andrew W. Jones. Lieutenant Colonel Mike McNeely. Colonel Don Stephen Patazny. Colonel Roman Czechvas, Poland. Lieutenant Colonel Walter R. Ross, Jr. Colonel Britton Allen Walker. Lieutenant Colonel David Charles Woodruff, Jr. Seminar 15. Chaplain Colonel Keith N. Kroom. Mr. Thomas Joshua Kasker. Lieutenant Colonel John Christopher Crossan. Colonel Gary Lee Cunningham. Colonel Joseph Edward Escondon graduating in absentia. Commander Daniel Christopher Jones. Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Casey Kennedy. Lieutenant Colonel Hisham Khalifa, Tunisia. Colonel David Joseph Lambrecht. Colonel Daniel Patrick Martin. Lieutenant Colonel Martin J. Naranjo. Colonel William Michael Parker. Brigadier General Saeed Sadiqi, Bangladesh. Lieutenant Colonel Christina A. Tweedy. Mr. Romeo Wright. Colonel Carol Zaplatal, Czech Republic. Seminar 16, 
Lieutenant Colonel R. J. Garcia. Lieutenant Colonel Artem Abdalyan, Armenia. Lieutenant Colonel Christine L. Cambry. Lieutenant Colonel Bradley Matthew Carr. Colonel Robert James Clark. Colonel Santosh Kumar Dekal from Nepal. Mr. William R. Funches, Jr. Colonel George Christopher Hackler. Lieutenant Colonel J. Kevin Gerard. Lieutenant Colonel Koku Oyome Kemens, Togo. Colonel Michael A. Lockwood. Lieutenant Colonel Monty T. Munoz. Colonel Alberto Nunez, Brazil. Colonel Patrick E. Proctor. Colonel Maurice L. Saipos. Colonel Brandon R. Tegmeyer, graduating in absentia. Seminar 17, Colonel Kevin Michael Nash. Colonel Scott Thomas Allen. Colonel Darren M. Bowser, graduating in absentia. Commander Ahmed Dahar Jama, Djibouti. Colonel Daniel Lawrence Gable. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Cletus Getz II. Lieutenant Colonel Brian R. Horton. Mr. Frank W. Lands. Lieutenant Colonel John G. Lahane. Colonel Neil R. Mahabir. Lieutenant Colonel Joe H. Miller II. Colonel Omar Noriega Ramirez, from Peru. Colonel Stephanie D. Sanderson. Colonel Todor Dimitrov Todorov, Bulgaria. Colonel Theodore F. Travis. Colonel Jason A. Westbrock. Seminar 18, Colonel Christopher W. Abbott. Colonel Johnson Kofi Aku Ajay, Ghana. Lieutenant Colonel Heather Ozette Belushi. Colonel Mohammed bin Shanar, Saudi Arabia. Lieutenant Colonel Randall S. Brown. Mr. Stephen M. Bilt. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Robert Helton. Lieutenant Colonel Timothy J. Hoffman. Colonel Kareem P. Montague. Colonel Robert Lee Phillips III. Colonel Oscar H. Pintada, graduating in absentia. Lieutenant Colonel Mark R. Reed. 
Lieutenant Colonel Stephen M. Sattinger, graduating in absentia. Colonel Shigemi Sugimura, Japan. Colonel Emilio Torina, Croatia. Lieutenant Colonel Trent D. Upton. Seminar 19, Colonel Eric James Vandenbosch. Lieutenant Colonel Jason P. Affolder. Brigadier Mohammed Nadim Ashraf, Pakistan. Colonel Erdenebot Batsuri, Mongolia. <coughs> Lieutenant Colonel Thomas S. Butler. Lieutenant Colonel William Michael Dowling. Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan S. Ebert. Lieutenant Colonel Christopher M. Corpella. Lieutenant Colonel Christopher J. Nemeth. Lieutenant Colonel Mark P. Ott. Lieutenant Colonel Richard H. Pitchford. Colonel Lucas A. W. Sgrurs, Netherlands. Colonel Philip E. Smallwood. Mr. Thomas R. Soule. Lieutenant Colonel Nicole Renee Spears. Colonel Jeffrey A. Van Antwerp, graduating in absentia. Seminar 20, Colonel Corey L. Seats. Lieutenant Colonel Winfield A. Adkins. Lieutenant Colonel Abdel Fattah Buziani, Morocco. Lieutenant Colonel Corey James Delger. Colonel Robert Christopher Donnelly. Colonel Ahmad Faisal, Indonesia. Colonel Andrew S. Fletcher. Lieutenant Colonel Ryan P. Frazier. Colonel Matthew David McNeely. Lieutenant Colonel John Michael Motzko. Mr. Jesse D. Munoz. Lieutenant Colonel Derek S. Ost. Colonel Arvesta Paul Roberson II. Colonel Chandra M. Roberts. Lieutenant Colonel Daniel M. Stark. Colonel Alexander Tarasenko, Ukraine. Seminar 21, Colonel Scott William Mueller, Commander Ruben Andres Alcocer, Chaplain Colonel James L. Bagas, Colonel Stephen Nicholas Carroza, Lieutenant Colonel Michael F. Charnley. Colonel Larry Conrad Dewey. Colonel Michael G. Dungeshaw. 
Lieutenant Colonel William P. Donnelly, Colonel Calandra Lavette Fortson, Colonel Matthew J. Holly, Lieutenant Colonel William Laughlin Kirby, Lieutenant Colonel Johannes Quena Maraca, South Africa. Lieutenant Colonel Vuong Van Nguyen, Vietnam. Lieutenant Colonel Brian Nissen, Denmark. Dr. James T. Treharn. Colonel Stephen E. Vilpors. Seminar 22, Colonel James Leonard Locke. Lieutenant Colonel Rodrigo I. Arce from Chile. Brigadier General Leung Son Boat from Cambodia. Lieutenant Colonel John F. Cadron. Lieutenant Colonel Jerome Frederick Dente. Colonel Daniel John Duncan. Lieutenant Colonel Ann E. Hessinger. Commander Kenneth M. Jensen. Chaplain Colonel John D. Lang. Colonel Lars S. Liervik, Norway. Lieutenant Colonel Derek C. Long. Dr. James W. Mancias. Lieutenant Colonel Charles L. Matayana. Colonel Leonard T. Rose. Colonel Michael Allen True. Seminar 23, Colonel Mark, Colonel John Mark Farrell. Colonel Mohammed Al Sumaiti, United Arab Emirates. Colonel Jeffrey David Buck. Colonel Fraz Inta Castro. Lieutenant Colonel Angelo Nicholas Catalano. Colonel Jonathan Howard Doyle. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew E. Jones. Colonel Rahabi Khachara, Rwanda. Mr. Michael E. Lechleitner. Lieutenant Colonel Todd M. Miller. Colonel Rob Clayton Mitchell. Mr. Carlos D. Morrison. Lieutenant Colonel Andre G. Navarro. Colonel Stephen Schrader. Colonel Eric P. Schwedo. Lieutenant Colonel Darius Wazakowskis, Lithuania. Seminar 24, Lieutenant Colonel Patrick James Sullivan. Lieutenant Colonel Richard Robert Balestri. Colonel Michael John Birmingham. Mr. Joseph A. Brooks. 
Commander Shannon A. Corey. Colonel Jarrett W. Dunlap. Colonel Peter P. Feng. Colonel Franklin Gomez, Colombia. Brigadier Rakesh Kapoor, India. Colonel Mark G. Kappelman. Colonel Adrian Andrew Marsh. Colonel Jamie Stewart Ogilvie, Jamaica. Lieutenant Colonel Tracy L. Poirier. Lieutenant Colonel Mark D. Ray. Colonel Matthew Scalia. Lieutenant Colonel Gregory J. Venvertlow. Lieutenant Colonel John Warner Wells II. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the graduates of the United States Army War College Resident Class of 2017. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remain standing for the benediction and the singing of the service song medley in all Lang Syne. Please sing along in honor of each service. The words of the service song medley are found in the back of your program. As you prepare to take your newfound talents around the world, I invite you to join me in the closing prayer. Lord, as these graduating students depart, we ask you, O oh God, to add to their knowledge, the support, energy, and zeal to perform their duties to the best of their abilities in the days, months, and years ahead of them, grant them your divine gifts of patience, compassion, and the drive to excel, granting them the mindset and humility to serve as sentinels of freedom and the protectors of humanity. Dismiss, dismiss us now with your blessing, we pray. Amen.
He's yeah. traveling. He's already done the benediction. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the departure of the official party. As a reminder to graduates, all degrees and diplomas, framed and unframed, need to be picked up at the Latorte View Community Center prior to 1200. The graduation brunch will be in the Latorte View Community Center according to your reserved times. Award winners, please report to the gazebo for photos. The Army War College gift shop in Root Hall is open until 1700. Elizabeth L. Garcia, please come to the podium upon the conclusion of the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the graduation ceremony. Thank you for attending, and congratulations and best wishes to the Army War College Class of 2017, Strength and Wisdom. <laughs>